In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend, a legend held dearly by the royal family of a boy. A boy who, after battling evil and saving Hyrule, crept away from the land that had made him a legend. With Done with the battles he once waged across time, he embarked on a journey, a secret and personal journey. A journey in search of a beloved and invaluable friend. A friend with whom he parted ways when he finally fulfilled his heroic destiny and took his place among legends. Two fairies did great! I wonder if he has anything good on him! Huh? This guy... Well, that shouldn't be a problem! What a pretty ocarina! Hey, Skull Kid, let me touch it! I want to see! You can't, Tail! What would, what would you do if you dropped it and broke it? No way! You can't touch it! Aw, oh, but sis, why can't I try it out too? Damn you, Skull Kid! Anyway, hi everyone, this is Legendary China. Coming right once again from, I guess, from the bedroom. Anyway, how are you everyone doing? I am so excited to be playing this game. I've got to get used to the controls too, since I'm using the Wii Classic controller for this and not playing this on the N64. Anyway, in case you couldn't tell, this is Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Um... Uh, you guys probably, I'm sure you guys have at least heard the recent announcements from Nintendo Direct saying, hey, we're going to end up doing this, uh, re-releasing this game. This is awesome. This is my favorite Legend of Zelda game, and I plan on 100%ing it. of yours. It doesn't listen to a word that's said to it. There's no point in writing a thing like that, so I did you a favor and got rid of it. <laughs> Aw, boo-hoo, why the sad face? I just thought I'd have a little fun with you. Oh, come now. Do you really think you can beat me as I am now? Fool!
<laughs> now that's a good look for you. You'll stay here looking that way forever. Wait for me! I'm still here! Tail, you can't leave without me! You! If I wasn't dealing with you, I would have gotten separated from my brother. But, whatever. Well, don't just sit there, Deku boy! Do something! Deku, Deku, whatever. Why are you looking at me like that? What, is there something stuck in my face? Will you stop staring and just open that door for me? Please, come on! A helpless little girl is asking you, so hurry up! Why would I even want to help you when whatever? Oh, Tail, I wonder if that child would be alright on his own. So we have Tail there. Alright, anyway, like I was saying, this is I'm playing this on the Wii Virtual Console, which is actually on my Wii U, but this is my absolutely favorite Legend of Zelda game. This is the one that I kind of grew in love with, and it's also one of the darkest and creepiest. It has a lot of theories and everything, which some I will touch. But before we go anywhere, um... Just wanted to point out this little lovely little thing here. Those little stars there, if you look up, I wonder what's up with those patterns. I always noticed it a while ago, but even still, the fact that they just kind of show that is kind of cool. Um, either way, we're a Deku Scrub, which is kind of different and weird. Um, instead of having a sword, we kind of have the spin attack thing, because we're Deku Blink right now. And we'll be noticing that Link is going to see quite a few transformations. Um, I'll also try to stay quiet during most of the cutscenes for this, just because it's such an epic story and voicing him would be nice. Hey, wait for me! Don't leave me behind! So, um, that stuff back there, I am apologize, so take me with you! Really? You want to know about the Skull Kid who just ran off, right? Well, I just so happen to have an idea of where he might be going. Take me with you and I'll help you out. Deal? Please? Guess I don't have a choice. Good, so then it's settled. Now then, I'll be your partner, or at least until we catch that Skull Kid. My name is T Tattle. Heh, <laughs> Tattle, Tail. I always messed up Tail's name to begin with since I really wasn't sure, but that makes sense. And having a fairy who's like Navi say Tattle is kind of funny. So nice to meet you, or whatever. Now that we've got all that straightened out, can we stop messing around to get moving? If I figure something out, press up, and hopefully I'll manage to get my help until then. So yes, Tattle is our Navi. And we won't, at least don't have to listen to the hey listens, it's just like a dot thing. Anyway, this is just, um, explaining that this is a Deku flower. It's, oops. I don't like that no is the initial thing. It drives me crazy. But, yeah. Deku flowers, if you hold the A button, you will just end up going into the flower. And you see that little spout? You can then fly! Well, partially fly, at least float through the air. Kind of like the Deku Leaf in uh, Wind Waker. But this came before Wind Waker! Anywho. Uh, but this game holds a lot of a lot of like dear places in my heart. This is probably the Zelda game that I have beaten the most. I don't know why out of all of them, because I know a lot of people Ocarina of Time is their favorite thing, but for some reason this game just, I love it so much, and I'm so glad to actually be LPing this. Anyway, our first treasure! You got a nut! Anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have the Deku nut, which is fine. Uh, here's all of our items. Okay, it's kind of weird that the way the controller's set up, but it'll work. Yeah, wrong button. Okay, so Deku Nuts are just how they were in the other games. But, um, if you pretty much push the direction, it'll kind of stun them. But the great thing about Deku Scrub is it can be a kamikaze soldier by pushing B in the air! And that actually will kill some enemies, which is amazing that they actually made the Deku Nut, like, actually be able to destroy things. I'm just like, huh, paralyze, huh, paralyze. Easiest way to beat Goma and Ocarina of Time, but that's besides the point. Anyway, this is explaining about Z-targeting, which I gotta figure out how to do in this game. Okay, so it's that button. Uh, when, when Tattle flies over to people, you can use the Z button or 
I think this is the L button on this controller to talk to people who are far away. Uh, if no one's there, you can just look straight ahead, but uh, it's very useful when targeting onto enemies and fighting them, which we will be doing five million times, I can tell you. But let's go check what this thing is. It's strange, but the way you look right now sort of looks like this tree. Looks all dark and gloomy, almost like it could start crying any second now. How sad. Oh, I'm going to keep doing that on accident. How do you control the camera? That's a good question. I will figure out these controls as I go on, but yeah. I'll explain a little bit more about this sprout later, because it's actually kind of significant, unless you guys already know. But anyway, let us continue on. And this oh, is just... this. There is so much lore, so many theories, so much background about this game, and honestly, I love the Ocarina of Time music, but there's something about the atmosphere that this game gives that, oh, I just love it. It is outstanding, and we can't go back. And just listen to this first song here. Oh, all the music in here is so daunting, so atmospheric, and this is probably why this is one of my most favorite games favorite Legend of Zelda games. And I've decided, hey, why not 100% it for you guys? <laughs> You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? The line! I hate that line! But I will explain about that later, too. <laughs> I own the Happy Mask Shop. I travel far and wide in search of masks. During my travels, a very important mask was stolen from me by an imp in the woods. So here I am at a loss, and now I've found you. <laughs> now don't think me, Rude, but I have been following you. How did you follow me down that hole? For I know of a way to return you to your former self. If you can get back the precious item that was stolen from you, I will return you to normal. In exchange... All I ask is that you also get back my precious mask that that imp stole from me. What? Is it not a simple task? Why, to someone like you, it should be by no means be a difficult task. Except, the one thing is, I'm a very busy fellow. And I must leave this place in three days. How grateful I would be if you could bring it back to me before my time here is up. <laughs> but yes, you'll be fine. I see you are young and have tremendous courage. I'm sure you'll find it right away. Well then, I am counting on you. The Happy Mask Salesman. One of the most infamous, loving characters out there for many, many, many reasons. Plus, look at all the masks he has. There's a lot of actually old Nintendo references here. Plus that bottom mask looks like Elvis. Looks like we have an owl there. But especially back here, you see, there is a Mario mask there. The fact that they just did that is amazing. Just the small, minor details and references this game gives is outstanding. And that actually looks like Bowser over there, too. Either way, so this guy leaves in three days. I guess we need to see if we can find that Skull Kid and do the best we can. So, let us start this grand adventure. Dawn of the First Day. Welcome to Clock Town. He gives me the creeps, that mass salesman was the... Sorry, just thinking aloud. Mm -hmm. But three days, even if we never slept, that still leaves us with a measly 72 hours. Talk about demanding. Well, don't just stand there. We're gonna go see the Great Fairy. Look, you wanna find the Skull Kid, don't you? The Great Fairy will know what he's up to. She watches over everything. And just between you and me, the Skull Kid is no match for the Great Fairy. Go to the shrine near the North Gate. You'll find the Great Fairy in there. And Tattle gave us our first objective. So, welcome to Clock Town, and this dog hates me! Why do you hate me, you so cute little puppy? I... This has to be, like, my most... The most favorite hub in the entire Legend of Zelda series, and... There's just so much that always goes on in this town. Now, just as I'm kind of going through things, if we just kind of address the bottom, we'll go through this town in a um, later episode just to kind of show everything. Either way, this is West Clock Town. But if you look at, there's a little time thing on there with a little sun and a little first. 
What's so different about this game compared to all the other Legend of Zeldas is that it's on a 72 hour time uh, slot. Um, you only have three days because and everything changed. Wow, I just accidentally went around in a circle. I swear I know where I'm going. It's been a long time since I played this game, so I'm a little confused on where to go. But um, many events happen constantly as time passes, so you're always going to end up experiencing one new thing or another, depending on the time of day. I will show an example of this probably in the next episode, but for now, we need to get to North Clock Town. And we kind of just saw the west and east. Um, let's break these boxes for the heck of it. I've got to get really used to controller here, because normally I'm used to using a GameCube controller when I play this now, because of me normally playing this on the Wii and they have the GameCube port. Since I'm using the Wii U's Wii Shop, which I know sounds funky, but if you guys have a Wii U, you'll know what I mean by that. Um, it's kind of easy to go through things here. Either way, welcome to North Clock Town. And we need to find the Great Fairy, but not before I attack these bushes! Must get money from bushes! Because even without a sword, I can destroy everything! Maybe I got a little excited there. Anyway. <coughs> Looks like... Ooh, I still have that little bit of a cough. Let's go over here and see what's going on. Uh, where's the Great Fairy? Oh no, the Great Fairy! What, what happened to the Great Fairy? Uh, what? Young one, please hear my plea. I have been broken and shattered to pieces by the masked skull kid. Please find the one stray fairy lost in town and bring her to this fairy fountain. Okay. Well, skull kid seems to be causing quite a bit of trouble. Skull kid turned us into a Deku scrub, stole our horse, stole our ocarina, and now a Apparently, also broke the great fairy. How do you break the great fairy, though? That's the one thing I never really fully understood, but... Oh my, the judge! Anyway, we are gonna just go through this last path, which should probably bring us to... Back to South Clock Town. That was a postman randomly going through there. Everything is on time! But we will end up really thoroughly exploring this area. Uh, probably within another episode where I can explain everything that's around here and go through there. But either way, if we go back to South Clock Town and go here during the day, mind you, we'll be at the laundry pool, and we have a fairy here. Now, Deku Scrub Link does not like water. Whenever you go into water, after I... Um, when you go into water, you'll see that there's a little countdown here. If you don't make it across in five hops, you'll just go back to the previous platform. So, yeah. Deku Link kind of has... Eat uh, each uh, forms of Link, which we'll find a couple others in here, has its own strengths and weaknesses. The scrub cannot stand water, and apparently little doggies called Fifo or Lyles do not like us! Hi, buddy! Okay, okay! Um, I, I, will, I will stay away from you. Anyway, let's go back to North Clock Town, which actually apparently the fastest way was going through here. It's been such a long time since I played this, so my... Uh, understandings of the game might be a little skewed occasionally, so as long as you stay with, uh, kind of help me out with this, it'll be fine. Bear with me is what I was looking for. Also, as you notice, I am trying to grind for rubies a little bit. Um, I don't fully need a ton of rubies yet, but I tend to like to try to get a couple of side quests done on the very first cycle. You'll understand what I mean by cycle as we go on through the first 72 hours of the game, which is probably really about an hour and a half. Either way, we found the fairy. Oh, if it was nighttime, you'd have to go... I will show you guys in a minute where the other fairy would be if it was nighttime, which you can just explore around to see what else is around. But either way, we have gotten the great fairy back up, and she still is as hoary as ever. Lovely. Tattle, and young, and you, young one of the altered shape, thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. I am the great fairy of magic. I thought that masked child was helping me, but I grew careless. All I can offer you now is this. I shall grant you magic power as a sign of my gratitude. Please accept it. Yes, the first great fairy gives us magic already. Within the first 10, 15 minutes of this game, we are probably close to 20 now. We have magic! Magic, I say! Magic! Woo! You 
we got the magic! Ubiquitin magic power. Now we actually have um, the ability called Bubble Blast, which is essentially Deku Link's arrows. The man who lives in the observatory outside of town may know of the Skull Kid's whereabouts, but be careful. You must not underestimate that child's prowess, kind young one. If you ever return to your former shape, come see me. I shall give you more help. Thank you, Hori family! Family, wow. Thank you, Hori fairy! Either way, we have a magic bar, and if we hold the B button... WE SHOOT SNOT! I joke you not, it is the most powerful snot in the world. Haha, -ha, but we needed that for a reason! Because we need to get to the observatory. Which is actually, I believe, in... Uh, East Clocktown? Did I go the right way? I went to south. I will get my bearings of this. Once I actually get a map, I will have a much easier time knowing where everything is, because it'll just kind of all be laid out there for me. But, this leads to the observatory. If you want to pass through here, you have to say the secret code. I don't know the secret code, though. Wrong! Jim said I can't let anyone who doesn't know the code in. If you're not a member, they won't teach you the secret code. If you want to be a member, go see Jim in North Clocktown. We actually just passed Jim a couple of times, but I kind of ignored him for now. But now we can actually go talk to Jim. And and, and not, like, Jim Kirk. This is... He might as well be Jim Kirk, because he's wearing a red hat. But red caps normally die anyway. What do you want, shrimp? I'm busy practicing with my blowgun. If you can't pop that balloon, then don't mess with Jim. Grr. This first episode might be a little bit longer, because I'm trying to get through the main things. But, boom. See? I could pop your balloon. Wow! Who did that? Are you the one who just popped that up there? Not bad for a Deku scrub. We bombers have a hideout that leads to the observatory outside town. You need a code to get in. Maybe I'll tell you what it is. But don't think you're getting in that easily. I can't just tell you what the code is. You'll have to pass my test first. Are you ready? Sure. All right, light up, guys. So let's pass this bomber's test and see what's going on. If you can find all five of us by tomorrow morning, I'll teach you the code. Are you ready? Yes, sir. That last little guy always made me laugh. Alright, we need to find five bombers within... by... Ugh, I'm gonna keep messing up with the controls for a little bit. Well, there's one of them. If you trap them in a corner, you can get them. So it's pretty easy. Uh, I think there are two in this area, if I remember correctly. Um, you can either do do that, or you can end up shooting a spit uh, ball at them, which will knock them down if you actually hit them. But uh, in all honesty, it's easier just to use your spin attack to actually get them. Uh, yeah, there are two in north, there are two in east, which it's three o'clock, I wanted to be a little bit further ahead at this point. Okay, so there is a bomber right here, if you went no towards him, he would actually, um, ride the cuckoo down, but without the cuckoo, he can't do much! That actually slows him down a little bit, come on, come on, come on, stop this bull crap and get back here! GET BACK HERE! Thank you. Only two bombers left. There's one bomber up there. Will he come down? One time I saw a glitch where the bomber up there actually came down for some reason as soon as you approached him, but... And actually ended up... I actually ended up seeing somebody get caught because of that. Oh boy, it's almost night. You see how fast time passes within this game, though? It really does pass pretty quickly. But, we just had to complete this by tomorrow morning, so it's not too bad. I think the last... Oh my gosh, why do I not remember where the last bomber was? Well, the only place really left is West Clocktown, I believe. Yeah, it's just about night. And it is night. Night of the first day. 60 hours are left. Alright, let's find this last bomber. Where are you? Actually, before we find the last bomber, um, I might as well explain about the bank system. So... Hey, uh, this person here is a bank, which we actually found in Ocarina of Time as a beggar. Um, but if we deposit 200 rupees in here, she will give us a reward. So, for now, why don't we deposit just 10, just so we can actually start this. But I will actually probably be grinding for rupees. That way I can actually be able to get up to 200, which honestly isn't too bad to do. There are many ways to do this, but let's catch that final bomber now that we're here. Come on! Haha! -ha. And we got all five bombers, which is awesome. You're pretty good for a Deku scrub. If only you were human. 
Then I could give you an original bomber's notebook and make you a member. Whatever, what do you guys think? No way! No scrubs! <laughs> I guess not. Once we let some kid who wasn't human join our gang, and boy, did we ever regret it. Sorry. Did the Skull Kid mess with them too? But I'll teach you the code, just like I promised. I can tell you only once, though, so pay close attention. Are you ready? Okay, so the code is 25143. It's gonna always be different for each game, so make sure that you memorize whatever code it is. Mine is 25143. So you gotta remember that. He, I don't think he'll tell it to you again now. No, he won't. But it's 25143, so that's a good thing to remember. So, I think before we actually head to the bomber's notebook, we should actually go see what the heck is actually going on in this town. Since this is the mayor's office, let's see what's going on. Alright, Mr. Mayor, maybe you could tell us something about this clock town. Most of the townsfolk already have taken shelter without waiting for the mayor's orders. The only ones left are public servants and committee members. Mr. Mayor and Carnival committee members, please order those who remain to evacuate. Um, well... You cowards! Do you actually believe the moon will fall? What? The confused townsfolk simply cause a panic by believing this ridiculous groundless theory. The soldiers couldn't prevent the panic, but outside the town walls is where the danger is. You want answers? The answer is that the carnival should not be cancelled. Isn't that right, Mr. Mayor? Um, well... Huh? Are you serious, Muta? It seems that giant chunk of rock above us hasn't caught your eye. At this time every year, we are overrun by tourists, so why is the town empty? Clearly, it's your job to ensure the carnival's operation, but that's if people are here for it. Don't drag the merchants and soldiers into this. Hmm. If the soldiers wish to run, then run, Visken! We councilmen will stick to tradition. This carnival will be a success! I've never heard of a defense unit abandoning its town. Madame Aroma would surely say the same thing, wouldn't she, Mayor Detour? Let's not bring my wife into this. My gosh, that poor mayor. So... I guess things are definitely happening wrong in this town. 